Why, hi there, and welcome to Mara Mike's Garage. Today, we're gonna to talk all about the exciting topic of Cup Cadet fuel tanks. What I'm gonna do is show you step-by-step -step how to remove and replace the fuel tank on this Cup Cadet LTX 1050. Now, this process applies to pretty much all Cup Cadets of the last 20 years. They got the same fuel tank on this newer GTX. Uh, so it's real simple. Real simple, and I'm showing you how to swap in. This one here, I've got a brand new one off Amazon. We'll have the link to the part below. It's about $99. And we'll show you how to do it right. Now, some of you might be thinking, Mower Mike, oh, why would I need a video on a fuel tank? Especially you, you're, you're a mower expert, right? Well, I'll tell you why, because I've screwed it up about five times now, and I've broken parts, and I've broken brackets. <laughs> it's a very specific way to do it where you don't break stuff. So I would like to share my experiences of doing it the wrong way so you don't break stuff and cost you more money. So with that, we're gonna zoom in and give you a killer look on how to do this. All right, so your first step is obvious, but just to make sure we have all of our bases covered, uh, get yourself a gas can and you're gonna drain out the fuel tank. Where I like to hit it, especially if you have a fuel filter, this is a great spot just under the fuel lines and drain it into a funnel. If you don't have a fuel filter, you can also unhook it here at the fuel pump and drain it there and just make sure you get all the fuel out of the tank and then we're gonna move on to the next spot. So your next step is we have to remove this bracket here and it's held down by four bolts. You've got two 10 millimeters up top. So go ahead and take those suckers off. See here, I got extra long quarter inch extension. This is one of the handiest tools I've ever got. And then your other one's gonna be right above the, uh, the fuel tank nozzle, right back in there, cubby corner. Go ahead and take those guys off. Try not to lose it. Oh, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Let me see, all right, I got it. All right, so the next step's the most important part. Whatever you do, don't grab this and just yank it back. It, that's what I did on my first take. I yanked it back and I broke the bottom two bolts, uh, return the, uh, the bracket off, which is a big no-no. So let's go down to the bottom of this sucker and show you the other two bolts. Now we're at the bottom of the bracket right behind the motor, you'll see there's two more bolts here, 10 millimeter, and you wanna take these off. Now on the GTX, the fancier ones, you're gonna see a lot of wiring back behind here because it's got the, the power steering pump. Yep. Some Cub Cadets have a power steering pump, it's kinda of wild. But uh, go ahead and take those two bolts off, it'll be the same on all the models, and then we'll show you how to pull this sucker out of here and get her free. As we say in the biz, this is gonna be the money shot, so hang on to your pants there. So what we've got, we've got the four unhooked, we've got the gas line unhooked down here, and then you just pull this bracket out like so. You gotta wiggle it around the, the thing and the thing and the thing and the thing. And the next thing you wiggle it around, and it comes out just like so. And then your gas tank is gonna be a little tight. You just have to pull it right there, and it pulls out. And as you see here, I got the <laughs> a giant hole in this freaking gas tank. That's why I'm replacing it. But I am gonna do another video on how to patch this sucker. So uh, let me go ahead and pull it over to the shop table and show you guys a little more on this bracket situation here. I've taken the bracket over to the table. I just wanna show you guys what this looks like. You can see it's got four mounting points here and there. Now, if you're a man like me and you see this as a giant handle and you just wanna pull on it, this is what happens to you. So this is from my other lawn tractor. You see this one, I pulled on it. I just undid the top two. And what happened down here? Yep, the brackets busted off. So I just wanna warn you guys, whatever you do, don't see this as an escape handle and just pull it. Undo all four bolts. Not like me, who is a complete moron. But I'm on TV. So all right, let's move on to getting this tank back in this thing. Now our next step is to go ahead and we want to prep the fuel tank. Yes, you do have to prep the fuel tank. So this is our new fuel tank. First thing you'll notice, it does not come with a cap. So go ahead and take your cap from the old fuel tank, screw it on, and then you're going to have to install your fuel line to the bottom. Now I always like installing new fuel line. It's very cheap, about a buck fifty a, a foot down there at the hardware store for this is quarter inch fuel line. And make sure to get actual fuel line that says for fuel. If you don't, you know, bad things can happen. You get chunks of rubber in your fuel. So, and then go ahead and put a fuel clamp on. Uh, you know, a fuel clamp kit is always a handy thing to have in the shop. I got this sucker here. I'll put a link to the Amazon one for something very similar. Uh, and then, you know, you just slide her on the bottom there. Now these quarter inchers are a little tighter because sometimes these 
if you want something a little looser, go with five sixteenths. But me, I like it nice and tight, so I go with quarter. And then you just slide your, your clamp up on there. Gosh, dog, that's tight. So that sucker is not <laughs> coming loose. Now, I do want to say something about the fuel tanks. Now, you'll see this one here uh, it does not have a vent on the top. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a fuel tank from a newer Cub Cadet. Now, as you can see, it's the same exact size, but it has this vent on the top. This is a uh, fuel vent that actually goes to the uh, the air box. That way it vents the fuel out of here, straight to the air box, instead of the older one has a vent through the, the gas cap. So if you have a newer one like this, you do need to get the correct tank. The outer dimensions are the exact same between the tanks, but to get with a fuel tank vent, it's an extra 20 bucks, so I'll have a link to both types of tanks. So just make sure to get the right type of tank. And with that, we got this on here and we'll go ahead and uh, throw her back on. All right, let's strap this tank in. This is the easy part, no worries. So take your fuel tank, you got your new hose on the bottom. Also, these uh, Cub Cadets have a little, I don't know what this is, a little skirt that goes around the, underneath the neck here. I just took it off the old one. Now that's gonna slide on the inside of the plastic part. So get your fuel tank, grab your hose, make sure the hose is routed over to the right as you slide it in. And you're just gonna push it in here through the plastic. That hose tank needs to, the hose needs to be on the bottom and then your little plastic piece. It takes a little shoving, but it'll, it'll slide right up in here. Okay, you got your hose on your tank. Then you go ahead and you take your bracket back and you legal waggle it around here and kind of somewhere on there. Alright. So you get your bracket and make sure it slides underneath the both bottom pieces and you're gonna hold it up a little bit and it's just you're just gonna drill those four back in there just like it came off. And then you go ahead and hook up your, your hose over here. And she's done. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, please subscribe. We'll put links underneath there to the two different types of tanks. And also, if you're going to patch your tank, I'll put a link up above here to how I actually patch tanks and uh, fix your leaks. So with that, mower Mike out. Did you guys forget this mower Mike's garage area? No way. I'm letting this pesky bracket get by without me trying to redneck engineer and put a little weld on her and weld her up. So we're going to do a short welding video. I'm not the best welder, but we're going to give it a shot. So your first thing about welding is the gear, of course. You're going to be outfitted with the latest. I got my leather, fake leather schmock thing here from Harbor Freight Tools. I got me some fancy blue gloves. Got me a helmet, auto darkening. And over here, we got the Hobart wire feed. This sucker takes gas. If you guys want a wire feed welder, Trust me, don't get the cheap one that has the stuff in the wire. Get the one that hooks up the gas here. Cause I got my 75% my argon, 25% carbon dioxide. And what that does, it makes a real smooth weld. So let's get over to the bracket and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna attempt to weld this up and we'll see if she works. All right, before we get to the fun part, and start melting metal, see if this works. I wanna go through the prep. So the prep is the most important part of getting a good weld. I took a wire brush to clean where I'm actually gonna weld on both sides, you can see right there. And also I took a wire brush here to where I'm connecting my ground. So this is the ground to the welding machine and then we zap it, it makes a connection to there, melts metal. Now, this is such a small piece. Usually I would put this in a clamp, but it's so small I couldn't get a clamp to work. So what I've got here is a magnet and you can see it's cinched up right there. So I think it's gonna hold it real well. And you'll also see there's a little gap between my two pieces. Now that gap is important because you want a little gap in there to fill the, the weld material in there. If there's no gap, it makes it much harder to weld. So that way we can melt the two and put the weld uh, fill between there too. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and crank her up. I've got it cranked up to what we got here. We got a level four, so that's the max on this 120 welder. Got the gas turned up about 20, 30 pounds. So uh, we'll see if she rips or not. I'm a... Uh, you know, I welded up an old Chevy truck one time, so I had lots of failures welding. So I know a few tricks, but I'm definitely not the best. But we'll see how this works, and I'm really curious if it melts my iPhone camera. Not sure, but here we go, baby. As you see what happened there, it's a little hot. It melted right through the damn thing. So I'm going to crank it down a level, and then we'll just tack it here. See See, if you get too hot like so, I'm just going to keep hitting it. I think we got a weld right there. I'm going to keep going over because I'm ready to have lots of weld. 
<laughs> that looks like a, a wasp took a turn on my weld, but you know what? That might hold. Now, don't go taking your pretty weld off. <laughs> it looks horrible on camera. Don't be taking your weld off while it's still hot. That's very important. You take it off while it's hot, you're gonna end up with a broke weld. So let's get some light on here so you guys can see how pretty that is. Look at that sucker. <laughs> it looks like hammer now. So with that, I appreciate it. And uh, enter, let me entertain myself over here at Giggly Gee over my welding skills. So uh, subscribe and, and let's have some more fun. Mower Mike out.